Hi guys, welcome back to Building Projects with Kotlin. My name is Tensor. Today we will be building an API using Kotlin and Ktor. Ktor is a framework built in Kotlin that's asynchronous. It's used for building servers and client applications. It's fairly nice because it has a DSL that helps us create both JSON objects and HTML documents and various other things. It also has a very nice way of injecting middleware and other little plugins like that. The first things we want to do in our application are to add this apply plugin application and to add a Kotlin block with experimental and coroutines enable inside of it. So this apply plugin application is for if we want to deploy our application as a actual executable. And then this Kotlin experimental coroutines gives us access to the coroutine libraries inside of Kotlin. Kotlin as a language doesn't subscribe to any particular asynchronous methodology, but the language does have a coroutine library that's experimental that you can use to implement some concurrency. We also want to go into the repositories block and add three new things. Originally, we just had Maven Central. We want JCenter, and we want to specifically reference two URLs, one for Ktor and the other one for Kotlin X. Another thing that we can do to make things a little bit easier on ourselves is to add an extension variable. This one in particular is for the Ktor version number, and the latest version right now is 0.9.1. Inside of our dependencies block, we want to add a few new things. So specifically, we're getting Ktor, Ktor JSON, Ktor HTML Builder, Ktor Server Netty. Okay, so now that we have our Gradle build file set up, we can actually build and get all of our dependencies. We just click the build button and we click rebuild project. Now we want to create a repo package inside of our Kotlin file. So just a directory called repo. And inside of it, we're going to create a new Kotlin class called person. This person class is just going to be a data class and we're just going to use it to basically model our data. For this particular API, we just want to be able to serve person objects that contain a name and an age. We also want to add an ID to our person object because we want this to sort of function like a database. So when we log in a person with the name and the age, it'll automatically increment the ID. We create the property called ID and we use the type of int with a question mark and then we set it equal to null by default. Now we want to create a new file inside of our repository directory called person repo and this will be an object. This person repository object will be essentially the object that we store all of our state inside of. So not only will it have the logic for us to quote unquote insert and remove and show things from our database, but it will be essentially the database itself. We want to create two properties first, one called ID counter. This will be an atomic integer type. And then the other one will be called persons, which will be a copy on write array set with person inside of it. And this persons will be our database with this ID counter being the ID that we can increment. And because our application is asynchronous, we need to use these primitives. We're using the copy on write array set so that it will copy multiple instances of it when we need it to. And we're using the atomic integer type because we don't want to have multiple writes causing issues. We'll create an add function. This will allow us to insert a person into our database or our fake database. Our add function takes in P, which is a person type, and then it outputs a person type. We check to see if our array set has P inside of it. And if it does, we want to to query our array set with find and we want to send back the actual person that we found inside of it. So what we do is we check to see if it equals to P and then these two question marks basically say well if this is true we want to send it out. If it's false then we want to throw an exception. Now if our persons does not contain P then we want to take P.ID which is our ID and we want to call ID counter auto increment and get which will increment the counter and then get the new number. So for instance if we put in our first person the first number will be one and the second person will be two, etc. Then we'll add to our person's array set the person that we're putting through this add function and then we'll return that person. Next we want to create two get functions. One for id where id is a string and the other one for id where id is an int. Both of these will automatically output persons so you can see that the compiler is inferring that they're outputting a person. The first one will first call persons.find. It'll check it id to string and it will check to see if that's equal to the id that's being passed into the get function. 
If it is, it returns the person, so it actually gets the person out by its ID. Otherwise, we throw an illegal argument exception where we say no entity found for this ID. We're using the Elvis operator to do this. For our other get function, if it's an integer, we just want to call our initial get function with the ID converted to a string. Even if the user passes in a string, it'll work using the string variant of this. And if the user passes in a integer, then it will be converted to a string and then pass through the original function. We'll also create a get all function. This will pass back a list of person. So we'll just take our persons and then we'll call to list on it. And this will just return an entire list with all the people inside of it. We also want to be able to remove people from our database. So we want to add three remove functions. The first one is to remove a person by the object person. So if we pass in an entire person JSON object that's already inside of our person's array set, then we can remove that person. This has similar logic to our original add function. We just check to see if not person contains p. If the person doesn't exist inside of our person's array set, then we throw the illegal exception where we say person not stored in the repository. Otherwise, we want to then just remove the person from our person's array set. These other two functions remove the person by ID. We just go persons.remove and then we get the person by ID. So we call our get function and then we remove that person and this will pass back a boolean of true or false. So if it removes a person, it'll pass back true. If it doesn't, then it'll pass back false. And we basically do the same for the integer. So the integer calls on this get function, which then calls on this get function and then it will pass back a boolean. Finally, we want to have a clear function just to clear out our entire person's array set. If for whatever reason we want to just clear the entire repository, we can do that and that's what this function does. So we just call persons.clear and this will completely remove everything from our persons array set. Now that we have all our data layer set up, we want to create a file called appconfig inside of the main Kotlin folder. And we'll use this file to basically just configure all of the attributes of our server, things like routes and middleware and stuff like that. We want to create a constant for the actual endpoint, which we're just going to call backslash person. Then we want to create an extension function on IO KTOR application application called main. Rather than inheriting from the application class into another class, we're just going to create this function and kind of do it in a functional manner. First, we want to add our middleware. So we want to install the default headers, and this will just give us very basic headers. Then we want to install our cores and this will enable cross-origin resource sharing. Inside of our cores handler we want to add max age which will be a duration of one day. So we call max age equal to duration dot of days and then we pass in one. So this sets up the access control max age header with our given max age of one day. Next we want to add content negotiation and inside of it we want to add JSON which is a JSON builder and we're going to set the date format with the date format being long type and then we're going to add set pretty printing inside of it. Content negotiation helps us deal with multiple different versions of a document. In this particular case we're talking about versions of JSON. Alright so now we have all of our middleware set up. We want to set up our routing so we just call routing and then we open up a closure. To set up a basic get request we can call the get method and then inside of it we pass in the path that we want this get request to be on. So we already set up our constant for our rest endpoint and then because this get request is going to have a dynamic variable which is id, we can then add that dynamic variable by using a set of curly brackets. We do want to add two extension functions before we start building out our routing. So the first one is private suspend function and then we have a generic R and this is the pipeline context. So this is all built on top of our routing get request and the function will be called error aware. Inside of it we're going to pass in a block which will be a function that will pass back an R and then we'll return an R. 
and we can return try on the block, so the actual function call that we're putting inside of it. And then if there's an exception, then we want to catch that exception, and we'll send back the error in JSON format. And you can see that we're doing this using call respond text, and inside of it we have an error here that looks like JSON, and then we put the content type, and we parse it as application JSON, and then we add an HTTP status code internal server error. Then for our second function, we want to add private suspend fun application call respond success JSON, and this will take in a value that will be a Boolean type of true by default, and it will then respond with a piece of JSON that's a success with the value inside of it. These essentially will allow us to parse whether or not we get errors inside of our JSON request. Coming back up to our get request, we call error aware, and then we pass in our block, which is this closure. We set up a val ID, and we set this equal to call parameters of ID, and then we use the Elvis operator. So if this comes back as true, we get the parameter and we put it inside of the ID. Otherwise, Otherwise, we throw an illegal exception and we say the parameter ID was not found. Then we want to pass our ID into personrepo.get and then we want to call.respond with that. So this will convert it into JSON and then send it back to the browser. Now let's make another get request that will allow us to get all of our people out of the repository. And this will just be on the REST endpoint. We'll call our error aware. And then we'll just pass call dot respond with person repo get all. So this will get all the people and it will then respond back with all of them in JSON format. We want to add two delete requests. So the first one will be delete by ID. We'll get the ID like we did with our get request. And then we want to call on respond success JSON. And we want to uh, check to see if the ID is inside of our person repo and then remove that person by the ID. Then for delete, this will be on our rest endpoint. And this will allow us to basically just delete the entire repository. We'll call person repository clear. And then we'll call back with respond success JSON. Now let's have a post request. So this will allow us to send a JSON person object and then file it inside of our repository. We'll use call.receive to get the person. We'll bind this to receive and then we'll print out that we received that person. And then we'll use call.respond person repo add that receive. So we'll add the person that we received into the person repository. All right, so that's all we want to do for our API. But before we're finished with this file, I actually want to build out a little bit of HTML to show you guys what Ktor can actually do. Okay, so we'll make a get request on the index and inside of it, we'll use call.respondHTML and we'll have a head element which will have a title of Kotlin API example. Then we'll have the body block. Inside of it, we'll have a div and an h1. And inside of that h1, we'll have some text that says, welcome to the person API. And to make the text work, we need to use this plus because we're actually technically concatenating it on to these macros that we're using. Then we'll have a p tag that says, go to the person route to start to use the API. In theory, you could use Ktor to quite literally just build out an entire front end if you wanted to. And there are some pretty cool things that you can do with it in this way. Okay, so now we want to actually create the server part of our application. We'll just create another file inside of our Kotlin root directory called server. Inside of this file, we're going to set up a port arg name, which will be dash dash server dot port. And then we'll have a default port, which will be 7,000. Then we want to create our main function to actually serve everything from. And we will go val port configured. We'll set this equal to args is not empty. And arg0 starts with port arg name. So this will allow us to run this from our command line if we want to. And then we'll run a quick if else check to see if the user inputted an object into the command line. And then we'll run our embedded server. And inside of our embedded server, we'll run using Netty. We'll put in the port. And then in our module, we'll set this equal to application main, which is the function we created in app config. And then we'll start it up and we'll have it just sit statically. That's why we're putting this weight equal to true. Now we can run our application. We can just run it through IntelliJ or we could run it using Gradle. We could build it and then run the executable. In this case, I'm just going to run it through IntelliJ because it's just easy that way. And if we go to localhost 7000, you can see here's our static piece of HTML that was created. Just says welcome 
welcome to the person's API and it says go to person to use the API. And so I'm going to open up Postman so that we can actually send some get, post, and delete requests. First I'll send a get request to localhost 7000 person and this will, we can send a post request to localhost 7000 person and we're going to put in the name of John Doe and an age of 74. If we hit send we get this response. Okay, so we had an error because we were putting in age with a capital A. So now if I put in a new John Doe with age of 23, you can see that now we have a new ID 2 and a name John Doe with age of 23. And we can literally put in any string we want in any age. So Jane Doe is 1032 years old. And of course we can get back our array of people. So we have three people in here, uh, various different ages and various different names. If we want to delete the first person, we can delete them by ID. So we can call localhost 7000 person one, and this will delete the first John Doe that we sent in. And if we try to get that person by the ID of one, you'll see that we get this illegal argument exception that says no entity found for a number one. And of course we can call our batch get again and get all of our people. And if we just want to delete all of the people from our repository, we can just call localhost 7000 and use a delete request. And this will call back with success true. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.